Some writers, some people are like fractals. They do many different things and from a distance they look like a chaotic pattern. But when you look deeper, there is some kind of harmony. Peter Lambert Wilson is a writer, he has written many books, has performed all over the world, reading. Some of his writing is very poetic, but one of the main themes is a place in time can be something else than just a place in time. It could be an autonomous zone, temporary autonomous zones. Peter, um, that's a concept you have written about uh, a long time ago now, 20 years, but what does that really mean? Uh, first of all, I wanted to say something about your fractal remark. I used to call this state uh, ambulatory schizophrenia. <laughs> I don't try to put all this stuff together. Uh, if I'm interested in, uh, at one point I realized I was interested in both Sufism and anarchism, and it didn't seem to me that this was really something you could synthesize, but I decided to heck with it. I'd just be interested. I'm interested in it. So <clears throat> in that way, for me anyway, these things began to come together just because I decided to be schizophrenic about it. So anyway, if that's fractal, okay. Now, on your other point, <coughs> I still think that the uh, temporary autonomous zone is a relevant idea uh, because it happens. In other words, this is not something I invented. I always like to make, a, make that clear. I didn't, I'm not like the father of the TAZ. I just noticed it. Maybe I gave a clever name or something that uh, has now escaped from my uh, grasp, and it's just, you know, it appears in, in the world now as a, a phrase. But um, that's because I think the reason why it's a good idea is because it's not my idea. It's something that happens. And this thing that happens is that no matter how, how much oppression there is from the state or how much monoculture there is from corporate global uh, capital, or no matter how much boredom, no matter how much uh, slavery, I mean, at any period in history, somehow magical community happens. I don't know how else to call it. It's not just the ordinary community, the one that you're born. It's a community where the extra thing happens. Now, uh, going to the deep roots of Christianity, some, I think Christ said, you know, when two or more are together in my name I'm there. Now this extra mm -hmm. thing that uh, one of the writers you, you, you talked about Fourier called like harmony mm -hmm. that um, exists in a group of people within a religious context which happens with uh, in what well, in answer that we know the, the hacker groups, what happens in the in the crackers, uh, the, the, the squatter movement, what happened in Ruigort. Mm -hmm. Isn't that another name for extra happiness, extra... Well, I, I was just trying to arrive at a, a social idea about that. Um, I was trying to see something in common with all those different kinds of uh, communities and uh, also seeing that this was a kind of a temporary thing because it depends on a special spirit, it depends on a very high state that everyone gets in together, uh, and that doesn't that's hard to sustain in human life. Um, you know, we don't have that many moments uh, of exaltation and, uh, you know... Yeah, but still, there seems to be some, some logic to it. I, I mean, if yeah. people come together for a good dinner party and the atmosphere is good and the food is good and uh, maybe the music is good, that extra thing happens. Absolutely, but then, you know, then everybody goes home. Uh, the, the dinner party metaphor is, a, is an old one. It was used by the anarchists in the 19th century to say this was their idea of how a society could work all the time. Right, that you don't. Nobody makes rules for the dinner party. You sit there. You say, "Well, I mean, you know, maybe in a diplomatic dinner, but in a nice dinner party, you know, and no one tells you what you're going to talk about, and uh, you can each person could could bring some food, so no one's sure what the whole dinner would be like. You know, there's a lot of ways to introduce spontaneity within a situation where everybody's ready for it. A little wine, you know, exalted state. Uh, and you have your temporary autonomous zone for the evening. So when you say autonomous. Could you also say isolated zone? Uh, well, isolation sometimes helps. Also, of course, historically, uh, like the pirate utopias, you know, you get far away from civilization, and it's perhaps easier for the spontaneity to occur. You can plan for spontaneity to emerge uh, when you have some isolation. Now it's a question whether such isolation could be possible. 
you know, I mean, certainly the pirate utopia idea is very hard to uh, sustain. Um, I'm just talking to these guys who are making the Y lands, you know, the, the floating islands on, um, on plastic rubbish. And I think that they, in the back of their minds they have the idea of starting a, a new country or something based on these, uh, on these rafts. And I was saying, I don't think that's a good idea because um, the, the combination of corporate power and the nation state you know, they're going to blow you out of the water. They have all the big guns. They have satellites that can see exactly where you are all the time, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know, so that kind of idea of political independence is very dicey, very questionable now. But are there places like... In other words, you can't be isolated by your own fiat. You know, I am now isolated. I'm a nation state. Mm. Someone's going to blow you out of the water. So you either have to hide or you have to find a niche somewhere. Now, is cyberspace such a, a place where... Ten years ago, people thought this would be the new utopia, the, the new democracy, the new place where uh, new ideas and, and, and even revolutionary ideas could flourish. Well, I, I have to say, not even 20 years ago did I say that. I never said that. People accuse me of saying that, but they, they, don't have, they haven't read the book. What I said was that the temporary autonomous zone is a place, a physical place in time, and cyberspace is not a physical place. Be, uh, you have inter interactivity, but you have no communication, uh, no community, because the body isn't there, the nose isn't there, the, the ears are usually not there, usually only the eyes are there. And, uh, the uh, you know, eyesight is this supposedly the noble sight because it's detached from our bodies and it's the source of our knowledge of the world and so forth and so on. But the isolation of the sense, of the one sense, um, I think is uh, potentially sickening, you know, on the social, especially on the social level. And um, I also think that uh, what, I, what I said 20 years ago was that this cyber thing, which uh, I don't even know if we used the word then, uh, could be uh, uh, an, uh, a, a way to potentiate the possibility of the emergence of the TAZ through uh, uh, communications, right? I'm not sure that even this has been realized. So the idea was there that you could use communication, uh, email and so on, to bring people together on a specific sur a subject and in a specific mood that could lead to this, this um, yeah. I, f I find it, when I hear you talking about the temporary autonomous zones, what comes to mind is one plus one is three. You see, uh, two people, and then there's something extra, and that extra is what you have tried to to find, to describe, in in, in ranging from dinner parties to pirates in, on the high seas. Yeah, sure. Uh, I like to quote uh, Michel Serret, uh, Serret, Serret, the French philosopher who t talks about Hermes, and he says that uh, whenever whenever there are two, then Hermes arrives. It's the, he's the th the third. Uh, he's, 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 he is communication, he is the secret, he is uh, the guest, the parasite, the third, uh, this, this mysterious force, you know, and um, that's the uh, magic, if you like, uh, of, uh, of the TAZ, is this uh, third, the third, un the uninvited guest. Okay, at the same time, these TAZs that you've described, apart maybe from uh, harmless dinner parties, uh, have been groups or situations w that were seen by society as uh, threatening. Take the pirate uh, uh, empires in, the, in North Africa or in, in the high seas in the, in the Caribbean. Uh, take uh, the, uh, the communities that you describe in the 19th century. Uh, one of them was called the Phalanx by uh, Fourier. Sure, well, those were intentional communities in modern yeah. terms. They were always seen as dangerous to the present order, the political order. Sure, if you're autonomous long enough, you get noticed, and then the, the trouble starts. You know, uh, and usually I find uh, for these uh, political or, or violent TAZs, the ones that achieve a large scale, the size of a city or even a, perhaps a, a region, these these tend to last about 18 months to two years. <laughs> I don't, you know, uh, all I can say is that seems to be an organic time. 